Hello friends, my name is Aslam Sheikh, your host for this evening and I'm the founder and CEO of Alif, a platform to promote the global uh, perspective of education and career. This is our 18th webinar series and broadcast is uh, broadcast live on Facebook and YouTube channel. Every Friday we aim to bring in the valuable speakers uh, to discuss the topic that is important to you and help the students and parents to make a wise career decision. So if you have not liked our Facebook page yet or subscribe to our YouTube channel, I would invite you to do so. And I'm quickly sharing the link here so that it becomes easy for you. Just click on here and then you will be guaranteed to have a quality discussions every Friday or uh, quality updates regarding the education and study abroad matters related. For the benefit of our new uh, viewers who have joined us first time on this webinar, I would like to present you Alif in a very short, short and quick way so that you know who we are and what we do. So uh, let me share the screen. I'll take you to a very small, brief introduction of Alif. Okay, so uh, as the name suggests, you must, uh, you must be wondering that uh, uh, what this Aleph is stands for. So uh, let me introduce you that Aleph is actually uh, the first alphabet in Urdu and Arabic language. And that denotes the beginning of education or the start of education. And we thought that uh, it's an appropriate name to keep as an organization because uh, we have got students who do career counseling, who take our services to begin their new education journey to go abroad for higher education. And that's how the name appears. Uh, about our company, we established in 2008 and we have counseled over 23,000 students so far. We maintain 100% admission ratio across uh, the universities which we represent. We have got 95% visa ratio for all our students, which is among the best in the industry. We represent 14 plus countries. And in uh, regards to the affiliations, we are certified uh, consultants by the British Council, US High Commission, Uni Agent, ISIF, which is the prime body in the world in Germany and the Weber of Switzerland and many more. Uh, what we promise is a 100% guarantee of admission to the university which we represent based on uh, the application which we receive from the students. These are the, some of the universities which are one of the world's best or uh, mostly they are at, uh, among the top 200 or top 300 in the world for different courses. What we uh, also assured you the scholarship up till now in last over 10 years, we have distributed over 23,000 crores of scholarship to our students under various heads, which you can go through later on. Uh, we have got a lot of students getting the scholarship as low as 2,34,000 to as high as 100% tuition fee waiver for the universities in Germany. Uh, what we essentially do is that we offer career counseling, whether you want to study in India or abroad, well, the first step needs to be the right step. And uh, this is where most of the students and his parents have got the confusion what to study. And that's what we try to address through our DMI technology, which we use, or the online psychometric aptitude or personality test, whatever you call. So we have got one of the best tests with, uh, with us, which we'll introduce to you. Uh, we also offer the IELTS coaching, which is uh, important and essential for almost all the universities you want to go abroad for. And we offer the uh, services for study abroad, right from student profiling to application to finding the accommodation and in between everything. The countries which we represent are based out of Europe, North America, Middle East, and Asia Pacific. So you have got plenty of countries option and you can uh, choose or we can guide you to choose the right university and right country. We also help the students not only just to go abroad for studies, but also prepare yourself before you go. So apart from documentation, what we talk about the preparation is like cross-culture training, health uh, awareness, etiquettes, different etiquettes, which you got to know before you enter into a foreign country, which you've never been before, etc. So that's how we prepare you well before you go. We also visit uh, our students. So we assure the quality of the universities, the students. So we know the university where we are referring you. It's not just a Google based search, uh, but uh, we and uh, me and my counselors, they visit and we have got that's the reason why we have got 95 percent student satisfaction ratio. Uh, again, a testimony of our work. Uh, we have got four, rated 4.6 out of 5 on Google. We have got 96,000 followers and that makes us Alif, the third largest uh, company in our domain in the in India. For having the maximum followers similarly we have got uh, pretty decent subscribers across the different social media channels 
these are some of the events which we keep on doing it and these are the photographs uh, my counselor visit meeting the students abroad taking the feedback and that's what something we do and these are the success stories of some of our students uh, this student's uh, research work was published in the local newspaper in new york she is studying in state university of new, new york she's a engineer student so already got a job and uh, uh, akshay is also from mumbai he was from nm college now did his mba and working successfully for last 3 years in ireland so we have got a lot of success stories about me i've counseled personally more than 1000 students travel more than 14 countries and been certified counselor by various agencies uh, which you get and that's a surprise gift which is coming to you so stay tuned and i'll surely share with you so that was a small introduction and uh, before we move further so if you are uh, listening to us first time and if you are a career counselors or principal or industry experts and would like to join us on this platform please uh, write to me on aslam at the rate alif dot in and i'll be more than happy to have you on our platform and uh, uh, i quickly introduce you the today's topic today's topic is new education policy 2020 we already covered the first part in the last week it was a very exciting part we had more than 100 uh, viewers across different channels and we have very interactive session and that led us to also come to the second part because we had so many inquiries which we couldn't com uh, complete in first year first uh, episode so we are uh, trying to complete it in today's uh, session so let's begin this session and i will uh, do the honor of introducing our very eminent speakers who are available today and they, uh, with their insights to share with you the information and knowledge which you are looking for with regards to this particular topic so uh, our first speaker uh let me introduce and have him here with us mr himanshu dev hi himanshu hi hello himanshu so uh, i'll quickly I read about himanshu's profile so that we everybody knows who he is and what he does so himanshu is a keynote speaker and higher education and career expert he served in the us uh, department of states education uh, his program uh, students reach mit harvard cornell and columbia and also in india across the best institute like iit iims and isbs he has a, he was a lecturer at the university of north carolina usa and completed his masters from the same university in the international studies uh, with a full scholarship he is currently uh, advisor to various schools universities government and organizations across the world we welcome him anshu thank you okay so our next speaker let me do the honor of uh, introducing her our next speaker is ms debika chatterjee hello ma'am thank for joining us you are on mute sorry you can see, see hear you hi hello hi aslam hi thank you very much ma'am for joining us again uh, let me introduce uh, ms debika chatterjee she is the director principal of jbc and international school with over 20 years of experience in the field of education currently has the borivli branch of jbc and international school as a director principal uh, she's also been instrumental in setting up the one world uh, international uh, ib uh, school in singapore she has been instrumental in implementing and channelizing the un's 17 sustainable development goals as a long term vision of the school she is also the recipient of various awards uh, which includes the ethical education leadership award by international education awards progressive principal of the year uh, by the rethink india and the best principal performance award by the global achiever foundation thank you ma'am for joining us again thank you thank you aslam thank you okay so uh, let me also introduce you our next speaker from sangli and his mr ganesh kumar hello mr ganesh yeah hi hello uh, mr ganesh is the principal of maeers vishwa uh, vishushanti gurukul school of sangli mr ganesh has 22 years of experience working in the field of education with two master degree in it and environmental science he worked with various international schools all over maharashtra karnataka ap and telangana so he'll be the right person to you know uh, answer your lot of queries related to different states as well and his leadership is uh, uh, is a student and a teacher centric and he's experimented with multiple teaching methodologies tailored to the needs of every student currently he is the founding principal of mid vgs sangli we welcome mr ganesh yeah thank you aslam and it's my pleasure being here thank you sir Okay, so uh, let's next speaker. Um, she was very active last episode, and she had a lot of queries to answer. Dr. Jaya Parekh, hello, Dr. Jaya. Hello, Namaste. Good evening. Namaste. Thank you very much for joining us again. 
डॉक्टर जया पारेख शी इज अ पीएचडी इन केमिस्ट्री बी एड एम बी ए इन एजुकेशन मैनेजमेंट नाइनटीन ईयर्स ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस इन द फील्ड ऑफ एजुकेशन एंड नाइन ईयर्स एज ए स्कूल लीडर करेंटली सर्विंग एज अ प्रिंसिपल ऑफ राम रत्न इंटरनेशनल स्कूल मुंबई सिंस टू थाउजेंड ट्वेल्व Dr Jay is an active member of executive committee of member of International School Association Education Today Society Tomorrow Dr Jay also is a proud recipient of many awards that includes Rex a chain championship fellowship award 2019 Tosh Bearer School Award supported by United Nations and the innovative principle of 2018 by International School Awards Dubai thank you very much Dr Jay for joining us my pleasure thank you for having you Okay, let's move to the next speaker. And in this panel, we have got uh, a new speaker joining us, Dr. Sagarika Roy Patia. Hello, ma'am. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, Dr. Sagarika, she is the ex-principal of RBK International School, a dynamic, uh, diligent, and resourceful administrator with a successful track record spanning higher education, primary, secondary, and special education. She has been associated in dynamic roles. at poda group of school diva patel international school svkm jv parek international school and webgor high school thank you very much ma'am for joining us it's really pleasure to have you thank you okay so all of us if you have any questions during the session i would request you to please type in the comment box and we will try to take the question as we progress in the session and i will also announce a special gift for our students and parents and uh, that's very uh, interesting i guess for you to know uh, because many a time it happens that we talk about the careers and lot of avenues and opportunities but the first question still remain unanswered that how do we decide what to study how do i decide that what is good for me i have got bunch of information lot of knowledge but still how do i ma make a right match with the right program and for that i would share with you a very advanced uh, uh, student ability test uh, and uh, the saving of 4000 on that so stay tuned and i'll share the link soon okay so uh, let's begin uh, with the uh, the introduction of the first topic and i will invite our speaker uh, of the evening uh, quickly so that they join in us in the room and uh, they enlighten us on a various topic so let's quickly move on and i'll request the speaker so let's be as fast as possible so that we cover the most of the questions so we left uh, the last point last week on to uh, the the sixth standard onwards changes which has been introduced and now i want to move ninth onwards till 12th class and the changes are going to happen in this uh, particular journal so my first question to dr jaya uh Uh, Dr. Jaya, we are talking about now the multidisciplinary study options, and this right. is something which is very exciting because we've been counselling students for last what ten years that why should they go abroad? I know for this particular and very reason that you can experiment with a lot of courses, you can take your hobby right. course as your minor and do the major along with it. What's your take now? This policy is talking about multidisciplinary has been introduced here in India, so. let me hear from you please uh thanks aslam so i think it was a long awaited and much needed reform when it comes to multidisciplinary i think indian education was lacking in this area when compared with the international uh, the best of the education in the world so multidisciplinary actually gives a holistic understanding of any concept going beyond the limits and the walls of a particular subject or a discipline so those hard silos which were existing between arts and humanities or between co curricular and curricular or academic and vocational those are now going to be melted down everything becomes a part of learning because this policy talks about learning to learn for life now life doesn't uh, throw challenges at you concerning to one particular subject or a discipline so one has to apply holistic thinking a critical thinking with a knowledge of various subjects skills and vocations so i think this is high time that india really accepted this and the schools and institutions higher education institutions adopted this system so i feel uh, this would give more a uh, detailed understanding of maybe lesser concepts but so the content is going to be reduced definitely but is going to be more comprehensive approach to learning of those concepts so suppose a child studying sciences is also free and is allowed to take dance 
so a medical student may have a background of dancing as well then similarly a mathematics students can take up fine arts so you know there is no limit and as far as vocational is concerned it also talks about local skills it could be pottery it could be painting it could be anything so a child right. is not limited limited because your brain does is not limited to just one domain it has several right. domains and all the domains need to be stimulated uh, together right. properly so does that mean that a uh, uh, student need not to look out of the curriculum to do this exercise now it becomes a part of right. the curriculum so he'll do it absolutely so here the okay. schools have to offer schools and colleges have to offer the various options so that the right. child can make it a part of curriculum it has to be integrated in the curriculum it is no longer going to be extra curricular or co curricular thing absolutely right it's thank you very much it's a way of teaching learning process right right that's that's very interesting i believe that and students parents you would be you know really fortunate to have this kind of learning approach whereby you are you know combining the best of i not say two worlds but the different worlds <laughs> okay so uh, mo we're moving to the next so, question so it's not only about it's not only about the subjects but it's also about the pedagogy so you know it is going to be diverse more hands on right. experiential art integrated sports integrated storytelling so more engaging fun enjoyable relevant Absolutely. hands holistic thank you so fun loving and i'm sure that the students and parents would enjoy this education much right. uh, much much better than the before and let's change the gear now immediately and then talk about uh, this is the most asked question i think uh, by the parents that uh, when we talk about uh, uh, the 9 10 11 12 this is the final block we are talking in this session so we already covered right. the other 5 plus 3 plus 3 block so we are talking about the la last four a uh, last one block which talks about 9 10 11 12 and mr ganesh i would like to invite you to uh, educate us that uh, we've been seeing that 10 plus 2 this is what we've been hearing and we are very accustomed to now suddenly we are talking about 9 till 12 coming together in one block so how this is going to take place can you please educate us yeah uh, as rightly said by dr teya see so in this 9 10 11 12 12 uh, in the case of this uh, last phase of this 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 they are talking about this multidisciplinary approach there is no hard separation between the academics as well as uh, occasional courses as well as that no there is no difference between science and arts and humanities see basically a teenager uh, see i know a child uh, okay uh, generally i am seeing uh, i saw him uh, from uh, 10 15 years onwards his basic idea is whenever i ask him what you want to become he used to tell like i want to become as an astronaut but once when he geared up with the using this coding and all that he changed his attitude uh, later stages he used to tell that i want to become as a software engineer so here with this multidisciplinary approach if we are giving them the chances of learning different subject different sort of things so they will experience a various uh, uh, subjects various uh, 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 pedagogy say they want they will uh, approach so in this sense what happens is uh, with lot of flavors to him okay he can choose uh, when he attends the age of uh, uh, like 16 uh, he will get a clarity in which field he is uh, suitable to so otherwise what happens is in the uh, past previous approach they generally used to learn only science arts or commerce uh, defined to a particular approach Uh, maybe after 16 years they found that uh, it's not suitable they learn commerce finally they end up with it is not suitable it is not my cup of tea okay so here with this multi uh, disciplinary approach from uh, this 9th to 12th they can experiment with the different options and they will get right. a clarity about their career so they they yeah, they can carry this uh, multi disciplinary approach across this four years you mean to say from 9th yeah, to 12th it's like uh, there these some things has to be clarity has to be uh, come in the document because few things they have opted as uh, one year long course see when they are going with major and minors so they have to define how many years this major uh, minors are going to be placed or whether it is but uh, when i gone through the document they have uh, mentioned in a sentence like these are one year courses one year long course so like right. for example minor they can have some minors in 10th another minor so they can have the flavors of different minors right 
right better after completing of plus 2 they will get a clear idea of what they can do okay 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 so on, on this point uh, many parents also asked and uh, they were uh, having a concern over the exam pattern and here i would like to invite dr sagarika dr sagarika if you can unmute yourself please and educate our audience that uh, how the exams looks like in this 10th and 12th standard and in between of this four, uh, four years of block dr sagarika uh, thank you aslam yeah the grade 10 and grade 12 examination is going to stay that is a board examination will stay but certainly the curriculum will be changed keeping the holistic development of the child in mind and when we say that the curriculum is going to change it's going to involve less i mean more of concepts more of skills and we we'll look into more of critical thinking logical reasoning and uh, would look into a student approaching it globally holistically you know so uh, first thing the main the main change is that road learning will take a back seat and it will be higher order thinking skills that will be assessed and also skills and concepts that will be assessed that is one part of the board examination and at the same time uh, another interesting part of the nep 2020 coming into force would be uh, the board examinations will have two entry points that is at one entry point if you don't fare well you have another second chance to improve your grades which was never there in india it was always there in our international curriculum but it was never right. there in india so first time in the indian curriculum an entry of two point of examination is really a well taken point and uh, thirdly also post grade 10 it was a gradual shift of the child into grade 11 and uh, again in international education and international studies as you have always been in that particular domain i am sure you know about what is called a gap year right you know so gap yeah. year in indian in the indian education wasn't really taken very positively so now with nep 2020 coming in after grade 12 or grade i mean after grade 10 for some particular reason maybe illness or death in the family or maybe you would want to go and pursue some virtual course you know so uh, you can take a gap year and you can have an entry into grade 11 even after a year it's not necessary that it has to be continued so that is about the 11th and 12th also at the same time the curriculum apart from having your main core subject would be uh, they would even have vocational subjects so uh, the grade 10 and grade 12 examination would lay less pressure less stress on the students and also will give away with the coaching classes you know and so hence when, when, when we say less pressure less stress what do yeah. you mean by that yeah what do i mean by that is that uh, children now who have to take it is compulsory for you to take english math, science hindi whatever they're compulsory but then with your conventional subjects you can also have vocational subjects which are scoring which are very scoring right. like you can take art dance music you know PE and things like this. So what happens when a child gets a plethora of subjects to study and, and that's the child's interest, you know. Even maybe the child is not meant for certain subject but has to study the subject by force. But when you have a choice of subject, the child can actually take up that particular subject and I'm sure can excel in that subject. And this will give more room for players, for dancers, for musicians to pursue their career in uh, in others in in uh, in other fields and at the same time educate themselves because currently what was happening is the students who were not really uh, who, who were doing other things other than education like were good players cricketers footballers right. all of those they were going into NIOS by default right. by default they put into NIOS because they couldn't really cope up with the demands of the curriculum so so now with NEP coming this will be room for every student you know all five fingers are not the same so all students Absolutely. are also not made the same so this is this is a very welcome change and 10 and right. 12 uh, board exams are here to stay yes but with a different thank, thank you dr sagarika it was really piece, uh, important uh, and piece information and would be a relaxing information for many students and parents a sigh of relief that now if you are good in other areas your other areas can also shine into your uh, the your, the results or in the outcome of the education and so it's not only your education area would uh, matter so that's a very important piece of information we learn from her uh, 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 Debika ma'am I would like to invite you here when we talk about 
uh, the holistic approach of education and as dr sagarika said that there will be different ways to assess the students in this new era less stress exam so how does this uh, the scorecard would look like what would be the features of the scorecard and what would be the parameters um the holistic progress card so the neb calls it the holistic progress card uh, okay. and the states and union territories are supposed to design progress cards which will make them uh, multi dimensional which will give uh, parents children the uh, and of course teachers also uh, an opportunity to do a 360 degree report of each child uh it will include something very very exciting is that the report card will include self assessment peer assessment along with uh, teacher uh, uh, assessment that is again something very progressive very uh, useful because self assessment ultimately leads to the best best type of learning um it will also uh, focus on the uniqueness of each learner uh the progress card the, the holistic progress card will uh, focus on the cognitive abilities the socio emotional uh, 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 abilities the psychomotor domains it the progress card uh, will be based on uh, inquiry based learning there will be different uh, modes of assessment that will be used so there will be quizzes role plays so they've brought in almost every best practice in the field of education the holistic progress card will actively involve parents in their child's uh, education and development and of course one more very very exciting thing is that ai based software uh, will be developed uh, to help track uh, the growth through the school years and uh, help children to make uh, optimal uh, career choices which is again uh, the best thing to happen the assessment and the progress report of a child if it can be tracked uh through the years and it will definitely help the child the teachers uh the parents of course to figure out in the end what is the best path to take for each child so i think the reporting is is there are some very very exciting features in the progress report the holistic uh, progress report it, 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 look, it looks very interesting and it sounds very interesting because it it it, it showcases say for example my uh, the entire personality not only my uh, educational uh, skills so uh, yeah. who would design i mean have we got the uh, parameters well defined already or who will design this holistic card or whether the school will design differently or state will design differently how it is going to look like See, as far as our schools are concerned, we already look at many of these. We look at different parameters. We have something called effort grades, for example, which is unique for each child. We have uh, something that is designed uh, by our group of schools, and the same has happened already in many schools, which are looking at best practices. However, the NEP is for each and every school in the country, and that is the biggest. advantage of nep because it is not going to be confined to a few private schools which have access to the best uh, professional development these uh, uh, the nep will actually bring down the best practices to each and every school in the country and that is where uh, it will bring about a major change it can be designed by the state it can be designed by the schools uh, there is there is talk about setting up spe special research facilities to look at all these uh, progressive elements right. of education right. let's hope we right. can uh, move right. forward with that okay uh, that's very interesting uh, i would like this... to add a point here aslam yeah. yeah yeah, yeah as uh, devika chatterjee like rightly said that is going to be a multi dimensional report card where not only teacher assessment but self assessment as well as peer assessment will take place so you know this will uh, remove all the personal bias that a normally a teacher has yeah. you know it's going to be such a holistic thing that uh, all personal biases will be taken care of okay that, that's that's that's, that's very important that. that's very interesting yes if i could add something in relation to the card yeah yeah hello please. so aslam when it talks about self assessment i think we are making the children take Absolutely. onus for their own learning yeah. we want them to become responsible for their own learning because india never had the system of making the child decide what he does how he is absolutely in anything 
So it's a very yeah. big step, making them feel That's responsible. I I would like to disagree over here, Jaya. It's not as if India did not. <laughs> it's not as if India did not have this uh, system. It's just that uh, the ed education system report yeah, cards. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the way yeah. we were preparing report cards in India. In in, in recent times, in recent yeah. times, perhaps yeah. in Current in times. certain. in certain schools okay. because traditionally if we look at our uh, assessment system it has always been about self assessment yeah okay. yeah yeah okay. so okay. you are you will prepare this the national yeah. assessment center and the national uh, testing agency there is provision for setting up all these so that we can okay. understand how to do this better okay okay uh, the policy okay. the policy also says that the states and the union territories would design this uh, progress card acha so they have been given the okay okay, okay. okay. Uh, territories yeah uh, I, i would like to invite himanshu himanshu if you can hear us uh, our question um, i have got also a, a challenging situation say, say for example if i have to select the student as a foreign university if a student wants to go after 12 to abroad or maybe to a university here in india and i see this holistic approach uh, but the most of the time when we see the entry criteria for further progression of the education they are essentially based on to the academics so your score has to be this much your gmat or gre score or ilt score has to be this much uh, only some of the us universities and some of the canadian universities they do look into the holistic approach of the student they do ask that okay what social activities you did apart from the education or what other activities you got involved into what were you in the sports or music or drama or any other kind of activities but other universities usually they first look into the academics so how this is going to happen that one student scored uh, say for example 75% but his other areas are shining and one student scored 90% but his other areas are not so great to talk about so how that progressive path where by the foreign university or the indian university is looking into these two uh, uh, the the uh, the scorecard how would they look at who should they pick up the overall good personality student or the academically well driven student himanshu if you can hear me yeah so you know of course i welcome the change but this challenge would of course stay the challenge would always be see we can we can create everything let's say i want to make my child unique you know i'm a father of an 8 year old let's say i want to make my child unique i can take him to the forest and you know prepare him all with the skills or i can take him to the us and prepare him with all the skills the thing is that i have to see who and how and what way somebody would be accepted we have to prepare ourselves we have to prepare our systems in such a way that it is acceptable so if our new education policy prepares us in the best way possible and and the acceptance is not just in the foreign international places or by other systems the acceptance i am talking about is at our own colleges itself so the challenge here talking among the principals of schools is that will the college system will the higher education which i work with as well accept this system very well or if they say okay we will accept this who will be the proactive ones we create a system and we we change the holistic system according to the college or the college will dictate us that this is how you need to develop it or on the other side how will we work with the industry we want to incorporate industry work with the school you know how will we do that the thing is who takes the first action here the government has taken the first action government has given the the directive that okay we can do things this way but ultimately when the discussion comes on the table what will an engineering college need like will iit admissions change that's my question will right. the medical entrance mm -hmm. examinations change will they need something else or iits or other colleges will be okay you have to score high so high 
and 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 ridiculously high on the grades and on the other side you have to take the entrance exam which is again testing you for mathematics and chemistry because we believe that scoring in physics chemistry math and scoring in physics chemistry math again in the entrance exam is the way to iit if that's the question who will answer that and who will prepare our kids for that is my question absolutely very valid point very valid point in manchu that uh, that's going to be the challenge and uh, any of our speakers have got anything to add to it that how this challenge can be addressed um uh, i would like to just add to what uh, himanshu said the nep does give us a way out because it removes the focus from just one thing that you can do iit is after all just one thing that you can do it need not be the only thing for everybody and the the four year for example the four year multidisciplinary bachelor's program it it gives an option to all those who don't want to really get into an engineering degree but they go for those entrance tests because of lack of options the the nep is giving us other options it's talking about uh, an undergraduate degree either three year or four year and multiple exit options so you can change your mind if you want to the question is that we never had the lack of options you know we always had so many options available it's only thing that students and parents they more focus is now more on other options right the focus right. is now more on other options and initially it wasn't multidisciplinary you know it wasn't yeah. multidisciplinary and vocational subjects were not given much importance now that vocational yeah. subjects were given importance and the and and the walls between you know the stringent walls between science commerce and arts that is science humanities and art has been broken up and it is multidisciplinary so the scope is more there's lot of scope now for children to pick and choose you know and what happens is like a child if you give him a kiwi and apple and orange to taste only when he knows the taste of it so now with the multiple options that child will know the feel and the taste should he continue further with that or should he not continue with that then he can take a break and go for a major somewhere a minor somewhere so there are a lot of options with the nep 2020 yeah right. and and the, and the focus is not on reducing the rigor or uh, making higher education less meaningful or less uh, uh, i would say uh, effective than it should be it is more about giving everybody more options and trying to focus people in various areas where they can still excel iit is not the only option that will Absolutely. give you a great career and a great life yeah i think that's a very good point uh, uh, you, you all have made uh, that uh, through this policy uh, the, what the government is trying is that opening up your mind so that you look at the different options which are available and then you're not yeah. just focusing on to through marks to the entrance exam which are marks oriented again and also be yeah. open and then try other the options yeah that's very well said i guess there is so, one more very positive thing to look at is you know schools used to put either sports arts and such kind of uh, uh, humanities subjects or art subjects as after school activities or extra curricular and right. a handful of very less percentage of indian schools if i leave aside you know the higher end and the international schools the other schools used to uh, get it as a luxury now it's going to be a common place thing the schools will have to provide and it also suggests ways of doing it like collaboration among schools as clusters and complexes to make it possible for everybody to afford it right absolutely right now uh, i just want to take this uh, the conversation to the another uh, direction uh, which also many students were asking us that uh, is it going to impact the student choice of going abroad and here i would like to invite mr ganesh and mr imanshu mr ganesh first uh, how do you see that students who are going abroad uh, will they have uh, now uh, easy progression or will they have any difficult things to face or is there anything for them uh, through this policy to progress further maybe after 12th or after graduation to further education abroad mr ganesh uh, yeah so seeing this national education policy i feel now students have a wide broad spectrum to choose the courses in our uh, local universities national universities here so where in uh, before uh, the ages like uh, if i exclude the top universities uh, like top 20 universities iits and a few iims and still we are having lot of engineering colleges uh, 
uh, wherein uh, in these engineering local engineering colleges also giving the options of major and minor is uh, not at all available till today most of the colleges if we talk about the high end universities they are providing such uh, options now with this policy i feel that all the students will get lot of options to choose so the students who are opting for going abroad may be think uh, and especially nep is focusing on the respect of our indian culture oneness of india and the policies whatever now the government is uh, preparing and implementing uh, like make in india made in india so maybe uh, the students a pot potentiality of indian students will be useful for india and they may rethink of going to students going to abroad okay what what's your take himanshu on this particular point uh so i missed a bit if you can if you can just highlight the question again yeah the question is that how is this policy is going to impact the student choice to go abroad for high, higher education so how how is it helping see of course flexibility yeah. is uh, it will definitely help but I, as i mentioned earlier you know we have to we have to prepare the mindset because the output is very important and we have to prepare the mindset such way because when we see overall speaking overall seeing the national education policy will definitely help us or our students to go and join the top national universities definitely so if this is in that direction yes it is and if the mindset by me here is what are we want the any schools these schools were all having these options but only in india or only in few countries in india we were seeing that somebody even at i did not advise to take this chemistry still think taking this chemistry and the ib correct is not meant for take all the subjects at this level so the students were still in six eight sorry your voice is your voice is not so clear i that is is to make us better for the international colleges then the parents the students the society all have to go together to change and develop that student into the best possible professional so this is how i would see and i would bring in the mindset angle to these uh, you know the flexibility options provided so right. i would be a bit skeptical for few years you know we took about 5 years to develop this policy so of course i see a lot of has been uh, done at the back end all but then right. maybe in 5 years we have a good idea Here we are moving and uh, and uh, keep making the adjustments uh, because uh, mm, we will of course keep moving, you know. Okay, okay. But so I would bring in the mindset angle here. We are here. just losing you in between for your sentences. How we're changing here? Uh, right. Uh, I, I, you know, how we will yeah. be able to. ourselves attractive to the top colleges broad okay thank you much uh, i would also want to touch upon this particular point which many students especially the students who are uh, sports enthusiastic uh, they have asked this question a lot of time that uh, as you rightly said dr sagarika that uh, they have got the one clear option that in us for the sports so, but now was, uh, uh, since having the uh, sports uh, included into the program uh, is got... yeah that is something yeah so uh, if this uh, sports we have heard is been included in the program so uh, what exactly it is whether it's really a part of the education now or it's going to be still extra curricular activities how do you see this thing? yeah uh, it's no longer going to be extra curricular activity sports will be an integral part of education 
in fact extra curricular co curricular and curricular will be totally bound together as one entity totally as one entity so there's not going to be a different mark sheet for sports and different mark sheet for education for your normal uh, subjects it's all going to be one and also at the same time initially only pe was given more importance now even sports plus pe plus yoga these will be given more importance because now mental health of the child is a concern everywhere and especially due to pandemic you know due to this particular situation the children during this particular one year time the damage that it has done to the children and the mental health of the children i think this nep is going to do an excellent job and for sportsmen as i told you that is going to be opening its doors for every child that is when we talk of uh, the the in the multiple intelligence the harvard gardner's multiple intelligence you know it's going to give room to each and every child with a who's with with different capabilities so sportsmen will also of course get an upper hand in this particular curriculum they'll be able to do more and they'll be graded accordingly for that you know okay so can also take these as a subject vocational guidance when i say vocational subject they'll have sports as a vocational subject so they can actually hone this particular subject they can so perform and learn yeah if i'm interested in football uh, today's generation is more towards soccer and football so if yes. i'm interested in which football so i can take this as a subject or yes yes you can you can you can you can play the game and as well as maybe you can take uh, uh, that is physical education as a vocational subject also so you're learning also something about your uh, about sports and physical education at the same time you're playing also and whatever you're playing is also your the the system is giving you that kind of importance initially okay. it was the one who wanted to play it was an extra curricular activity or a co curricular activity it was not synced into the system now that it is synced into the system the child will get equal opportunity there will be equity in all of this together absolutely that's nice that's very nice to note about this uh, dr jay if you can hear us uh, i'm sorry i can't see you on the video uh, uh, yes yes i am here very much here okay thank you very much so there's a question has been asked that uh, uh, what would be the and how important would be the teachers role in all this perspective which we are seeing because we are talking about a lot of new things coming in and ultimately it's a teacher who is going to deliver you know the policy so you know this this right so if you are talking about the role of the teachers i think they are at the center uh, side right front everywhere in fact the policy has a beautiful statement which says that the teacher is at the center of implementation of this policy so right. i mean there is no question about the role of the teachers they are the ones who are going to make it possible to implement this policy to turn this vision into a reality because uh, there is a lot which has been said about which has been uh, said by the policy about the deployment of teachers the dignity that it will restore for the teachers the, the glory that the teachers used to have in earlier times it envisions that glory to be re established and that would happen through right uh, the brightest minds to be attracted into teaching with their career growth being taken care of through continuous professional development the kind of courses that would be offered very rigorous kind of the four year integrated bed course and then the three year uh, graduation plus two years of bed or it is a, a one year bed course so there is a progression the variety flexibility given there as well if you will ask that question definitely we will answer that as well but if it is about role so i think the teachers are being empowered and strengthened if we go by the word of the policy so it just does not end with training them and empowering them but there will be a better level of accountability and quality control so i feel uh, nep is looking at the teachers as the most crucial element absolutely of absolutely. this whole system absolutely it's a matter of pride for the teachers in fact right right now one more question is asked uh, uh, with regards to study abroad and, and uh, aslam sorry uh, the nep says that there has to be 50 hours of continuous professional Maybe. development per year per year you know so For every teacher yeah. as well as every will be at a level now every teacher will have to be at a level wow okay yes. so yes. there will be this parameters which will be set in order to have the teachers on board yes Okay, that's right. That's right. So a lot of importance. A lot of importance. Right, right. So you know, yes, there will no. be not only the teachers, but the school yeah. leaders are expected to have the 50 hours of CPD in a year. This would be conducted at various levels, that is, local levels, regional level, state level, international level as well. 
right so right right so in fact and teacher training focused, from a very new angle right and if you has focused a lot on teacher development a lot yes. on empowerment a uh, uh, lot of testing that is going to be put in place also yeah so there will right. be various levels of testing that will go into right so i believe that uh, as a whole we are going to uh, uh, yes mr ganesh yeah. when we start from the languages if we see the teachers also how to be now like multilingual teachers because of uh, the flexibility of three languages so right from there the teachers how to be now multitaskers right if right we have to take courses in the picture and multidisciplinary right. approach all the teachers have to be multitaskers so it is a lot of uh, stake is there on the teachers in order to make this policy successful and understandably there is a lot of importance has been given to the teachers to strengthen them to skill them you know so that they are competent enough to deliver what is expected out of this policy uh, again another question has been also asked that uh, the policy also touched upon not i'm not sure whether how detailed they have gone into but they have touched upon uh inviting the foreign universities in india i would like to invite uh, devika ma'am uh, to touch upon this point that uh, we talked about for, uh, inviting foreign universities i still remember that when the previous government was there that time also mr sibal made a uh, 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 serious attempt you know in, in this regards but what we got to know is that uh, the government was asking for 50 crores of deposits and all those stuff which really put the foreign universities off from the proposal now here we are talking about if not the deposit but at least what has been talk, uh, was spoken about is uh, inviting the top 100 ranked universities of the world uh, to come and set up the campuses so my question is uh, how do we decide you know what parameters are there on which ranking we are referring here because there are different rankings when you talk about the different platforms so how would we decide which ranked top 100 university of what platform needs to be invited here Yeah, Deepika, ma'am, uh, you are on mute. We lost your video. Maybe I'll just come from uh, to Himanshu. Meantime, uh, Himanshu, uh, would you like to address uh, this particular question, please? Yeah, of course. You know, this is a, a very difficult question. How to go about it? And of course, whatever we do. there would be a doubt there could be a controversy there could be uh, some work against it for it so how will that work is a very difficult question but generally speaking uh, there are uh, uh, two big agencies which are followed so one is of course uh, the uh, qs rankings which a lot of people follow on the other side yeah. there is the times higher education ranking but even between these two not the same universities would be part of the top 100 so uh, i think there sh there should be something consistent that let's say we decide in 2020 that we take that rank into consideration but just being in that 100 shouldn't be the only criteria i would say those 100 could apply and then if there is something uh, so, you know some university which is not in top 100 they should be considered as well let's say something is 110 or 120 there should be some scope for at least 10 universities so that application should be there and within that application again a preference could be given to the top 100 either in times higher education or in qs or something like that we have to have a provision something like that but then as we are doing holistic report card we have to feel for the universities as well and take the holistic applications from them and again one part of that like one part is marks for the students one part of yeah. that could be the ranking something like that uh, has to come up and it has to be consistent for maybe 2 3 years or something like that yeah i think you made a very valid point sorry, regarding uh, sorry i i just couldn't no get back huh? uh, no thank you himanshu for taking the question Yeah, there we go. Would you like to add to what he mentioned? No, I, I agree with him. Just yeah, okay. Uh, yes, we would like a approach. Yes, please. Right. Yeah, so Ganesh. I'm sorry, I have technical issues. No problem. 
no problem mr ganesh and then dr sagarika mr ganesh and i just just want to add to this oh sorry yeah dr jay i'll come to you after uh, after sagarika sure. yeah yeah ganesh yeah aswan ji when we are talking about the parameters rightly said by demand so i want to focus on the i belongs to mainly school education uh, when we think about the higher education also the basic parameters to judge to invite the universities is first their capability of building up the infrastructure second is uh, how many number of courses they can provide to our students and the third i feel that uh, the research programs as well as the capability of doing innovations mainly in this area so if these parameters are if they are considering into that they can invite those universities right. to set up right dr sagarika do, do you see this could uh, also have impact on student going abroad they may stay back in india or how yes. it is going to be like yes uh, the thing is that we need to understand that nep 2020 is based on five pillars and the five pillars are nothing but accessibility equity quality affordability and accountability okay so once these five areas are taken care of and if these universities are ready to abide by these five pillars of nep 2020 then of course they are welcome to india secondly what will happen is that many children many aspiring children having excellent grades couldn't move abroad i mean there are very few organization like yours who have given this kind of scholarship that you meant that you mentioned at the beginning of uh, the uh, webinar you know but then there are very few i mean see our population i mean everybody would aspire to go abroad for a specialization because specialization itself is more uh, i mean it you can upscale yourself it's more you can become more employable more employable but now with nep 2020 coming in it's actually going to be it's going to open the doors for all these aspiring students who wanted to go abroad and study abroad because it's going to cut on travel cost on india uh, on uh, dollar versus inr uh, that is your um, uh, uh, students going to the uh, to uk that's pounds versus inr you know so all these inflation will be taken care of and at a very minimal cost staying back at home itself Uh, there will be accessibility to university so i think that's one of the best that can happen to the children of india especially the ones who were always aspiring to go abroad you know they have okay. lost lot of chances lot of chances in life and have never and have never been able to upskill themselves so this is i think the best that can happen okay. mooc of course mooc is always there mooc is always there online platforms are there doubtless but then uh, nothing like a face to face uh, the university is coming and getting exposure in those universities absolutely totally agree so, so your uh, the answer to your question would be yes students will stay back in india and will follow education here itself and it will be a relief for the parents as well knowing the econo okay. the economic conditions of the country yeah. okay so fact, i would like to say aslam yeah yeah doctor uh, yeah. you know it's in addition to this same point we are talking about universities to come to india okay and run their courses and programs this nep vision actually is too ambitious and is even uh, aspiring to have indian universities setting up their campuses abroad you know let's hope that that dream comes true where we should be able to uh, set up our campuses and be invited by other countries to set up indian universities there i think right. this is where we have to look at if we are looking at that quality yeah, yeah that's wonderful you know, put by dr jaya that's wonderful you yeah. put by dr jaya but also the other the, the flip side of it would that would be that if these universities come here our universities will actually scale up you know so yeah. our education yes, of course it will be to such a it will be very motivating for our universities to upscale themselves and deliver better deliver better which is actually uh, not really i would say happening now because of course no yes competition is always a good A, a a a good a good proposition. I think yes. Of I mean, so the, you, know, you know, in a few years, Indian universities would be setting up outside once we are able to reach that level. Like yeah. so some of the universities, like we have, we we know that Amity University have done a great job, and they have got the multiple campuses across the four to five countries. And in Dubai, in yes. fact, a lot of Indian universities have showed their interest to have the uh, campus. Uh, when I was there last time. Uh, even the the small uh, city of UAE, uh, like Rasul Khaimah, 
you know so they are going to be they are aspiring to be the next dubai in united uh, arab emirates and they are inviting a lot of indian universities to come and set up the campuses they are offering a lot of freebies and a lot of incentives for that so i believe that yes yeah, same approach if we also have towards the foreign university uh, i'm sure that i agree with uh, both of our panelists that uh, that will help even uh, the local university to upgrade and upscale themselves and eventually sure. it will bring down the quality to the students which is most important to them right so i'll just one come to the thing that is going to affect the future aslam just wanted to say one big yeah, thing man. which i feel will affect the future is the provision in nep which states uh, sorry i don't know what is happening um yeah, no, which but... states that uh, we will uh, uh, have credit based recognition of moocs so uh, the distance learning which which is being proposed uh, doesn't really necessitate uh, i mean it removes the uh, possibility of actually setting up universities either in india in uh, the other countries or other countries coming up and setting universities because it is opening up many new avenues especially in the present scenario of open universities and distance learning so Absolutely. that is another very great uh, provision in the nep right right thank you very much i've got few questions here uh, uh, students uh, who are looking for career counseling and if you are asking a specific question related to a specific topic that uh, what is good for you and what uh, you should select we have already done in the past a, a session uh, based on the career counseling and how to select the right program and we may be doing in future as the time comes but just to answer this question we are not going to discuss in detail here we are already uh, running out of the time however i would like to give away that gift which i announced in the beginning is that uh, we have got a student ability test and it is one of the best test in india uh, we are tied up with excess hub it is the best company for running this test for last uh, many uh, years and now what is this uh, test is available is usually in the market for 5000 rupees but only for today and we do every friday you know very well so new audience will join us today so if you'd like to assess yourself as a student your st uh, your strengths your weaknesses this is a well uh, documented detailed psychometric and scientifically proven test which would take around one and a half to two hours you got to be very patient with the test and you know to answer this question in order to have a clarity about which areas you should go for i'm sharing the link here uh, whereby you can click and then you can go through the test details and also uh, do the online registration formalities to take the test the test is for 5000 but only for today on friday we are offering it for 999 rupees so that is the very reasonable price for you it could be just a two burger in kfc or three in mcdonald's so uh, that's what amount you invest for your own future so take that test have that report and if you need a further counseling interpretation of the report then do uh, contact us we'll be more than happy to uh, uh, arrange a session for you with our counselors and uh, take you through the test report so coming out to the last uh, round of the conversation uh, we are talking about now the implementation part so we discuss and explore the various policies and various uh, uh, areas of opportunities which it gives to the students and parents uh, let's talk about the implementation i would like to quickly take uh, from each of our speakers uh, one uh, uh, or two lines of uh, uh, final note on to this implementation what do you think that how well this policy and when and how soon we are going to see this policy going to get implemented starting from uh, dr sagarika would you like to talk about the implementation part of this policy yeah i think the implementation of the of, of this particular policy would be best if all indians embrace this change and look at it positively if our target audience that is our parents acts are ready to accept this particular change keeping political biases away and seeing how positive it is coming up for their own child's growth i think that is 50% of the implementation right yeah okay that, yeah thank you dr sagarika uh dr jaya yeah so i think uh, nep talks of immediate implementation because within a year it is going to come up with the national curriculum framework for secondary education the for school education and also the national curriculum framework for teacher education so it is all set to implement what is needed is all of us to get into the right mindset and not just 
take word as a word but by its spirit and imbibe that spirit and bring in all these wonderful principles that dr sagrika just mentioned for all of us bring in in the spirit in all the entire educational system i think it's very much possible because the biggest point that it talks about is universalization of education access to everyone and it is possible if everyone is involved if each one is teaching one and is taking responsibility for one then only we will be able to reach out absolutely so uh, dr jay is emphasizing on the universal implementation and its oneness which is going to be implemented and friends uh, as per uh, her uh, this policy you are going to see the reflection of this uh, implementation from uh, the year onwards so hopefully we'll be having a lot of things coming in and exciting education experience uh, moving to uh, ms uh, devika i would also just like to add aslam yeah yeah jay once we have we have gone through the policies people are discussing about it let us understand and analyze and start from our end let us not wait for things let's not give excuses whatever way we have understood and whatever way we can bring in these principles we need not wait for timelines you know we can begin right absolutely let's begin right. <laughs> good thing needs to start immediately <laughs> that's true <Yes>. true <laughs> okay Ms. no wrong time what for doing right things Absolutely. Is Devika, your take on integration? Yeah, I agree with uh, Sagrika and Jaya. Um, my only thought is that uh, we are uh, the the uh, actually the in the best place as far as time is concerned because we are standing at the cusp of huge change. So I look forward to immediate uh, implementation. and i think the people who will really implement it and bring about change are the teachers because like everybody agrees at the at the heart of nep is the teachers yes so teachers. the implementation the change has to come from the teachers we are the ones who have to stand together and work yes. for our children because we as teachers know that whatever best we need to do for our children we want to do it immediately so implementation will not take time if the teachers come together and start working so the teachers if you are listening so the future of this nation is, lies in your hand so we have got one Absolutely. of the best policies yes it has always, always lied in their hands <laughs> has always Absolutely. been that <laughs> right i'll come to mr ganesh uh, before i will conclude the session mr ganesh uh, you are on mute so if you'd like to go ahead please Uh, you are on mute mr ganesh this nep nep policy is not a like a legal document for us it is a guideline for us so first of all what we have to do is start implementing bring awareness to all the stakeholders at least our stakeholders bring awareness change the mindset of the people and start implementing no need to wait for anyone okay because it is the vision given for all of us so that vision now we have to carry yeah. that way. the form of mission all the teachers together and all the stakeholders uh, yes. i think it's very well said very well summarized the vision has been given and a mission has to take this vision forward now so thank you mr ganesh for this so uh, uh, i i hope that uh, you all have must have enjoyed the session so as i and uh, we had another very good uh, uh, participation of our audience we had a lot of uh, good questions co covered so far and i'm just checking if i have missed any questions so uh, most of the questions are answered then uh, we'll come back again if you feel that you know we, there are lots of things to be discussed and we've been uh, getting the responses from the students and parents uh, so uh, thank you everyone for joining us uh, today it was a wonderful session we had on education policy 2020 what's in for the schools part 2 thank you for all the speakers for their valuable time and insightful knowledge and conversation which we had today if any of our listeners seek further information please feel free to contact us on our helpline number which is floating on your screen 9987099890 or you can write to us on our email id uh, info@alif.in also try to visit our website get some information and go to our youtube channel where we have covered all this 20 plus webinars which uh, we have done so far and you can pick up the subject which you are interested and watch it through my name is aslam sheikh the founder and ceo of alif I'm signing off with the promise that I'll come back again next Friday at the same time with the, another bunch of amazingly talented speakers to enlighten us on the subject matter that is matter to you the most. Until then, thank you very much for watching this program and stay safe, stay excited.